Hello and welcome to C Major Before the Show. We're live on this Saturday. Thank you so much for being with us. We are all here in the coronavirus, the COVID-19 atmosphere in the greater New York area. And it just feels good to be with you. So we're talking about sitting at the piano today. That's the focus of today's topic. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you all that we know about how to sit properly. So what's the first thing that comes to mind? You know, I really try to, when I'm taking on piano students, really try to give like a, a little short assessment of the mood, the intention, the attitude of the student to kind of reflect that back to them so I can really get a sense of how serious they are about learning to play the instrument. You know, it, it doesn't always just start with method. It also starts with attitude. It starts with the attitude of the teacher. It starts with the attitude of the student. It starts with intention. And so as teachers, we really try to be in charge of our philosophies, if you will. Why are we doing this? I know that I do this because of my experience as a student. I had a great experience as a piano student, which is why I continue to do it today. And my students are now my teachers in a way, but at the same time, I'm so open to teaching. I feel like I still have so much to learn, like it's going to take me a lifetime to learn every single thing I want to know about playing the piano and making music and sharing music with others and how pianos are made and and what's the best way to record professionally. Should we use technology or should we use a real instrument? Just so many questions week after week after week. I literally feel like I could talk about piano lessons all day long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I could just talk piano. So that's another reason for the podcast, too. The podcast is inspired by my students because they bring to the table things that I have questions about. And so when I talk with my colleagues, when I talk with other teachers, I'm hoping to have those discussions and say, you know, I have this student. And of course, protecting the confidentiality of the student but just talking about some of the issues that are on the table. And believe it or not, today's topic is a real issue. Sitting at the piano, posture at the instrument. And the reason it's an issue for me is because I feel like I have some students that don't understand why posture is so important. What about you? Have you ever thought about it? Do you even think about it? Do you think it's something that's worth talking about? Or should you just come to the piano how you want? So by the end of today's episode, I want you to really be thinking about your approach to playing piano. And we're going to carry that theme. We're going to carry that theme over to the C Major Radio Show. We're going to carry that theme over to C Major's classroom. And so it's a basic thought, but it's something that I think is so important. But before we start delving into that, I want to know how you're doing. Did you have a good week? Are you having a good experience or a bad experience throughout this whole social distancing thing that we're all going through. How are you really doing? I'm really concerned because I keep hearing different things. Some of my students are doing really, really well, but my musician friends, some of them are not doing so well. They're losing family members. And everybody's just really trying to get their mind wrapped around this thing. You know, what is this? How can some people come through it so well and then others don't? So 
my thoughts are with you. My prayers are with you. I'm, I've been praying with my musician friends and, and talking with them and and really just trying to help them make sense of it and to get through it as well. So just know that we are thinking about you if you are going through something out there. And my advice is to find some way to get music in there. Music does help. Music helps us all. And that's my perspective on things. We'll say a little bit more about that when we get the shout outs a little bit later in today's episode. But let's get to today's topic about the seat. So here we are, the seat of the matter. I'm turning my music all the way down because I'm really serious right now. Think how you want to sit at the piano. Do you sit up straight? Or do you sit with a slouch? Or do you just not care? Of course you care. Clap if you care. So we also hope to find some humor in today's topic as well but when I say to my students and a lot of the method books will say this by the way they'll ask you to sit up straight I have yet to see a method book where it says don't sit up straight (laughs) and if you've ever seen one of those method books please let me know but every piano method book I've seen like the beginning method book will say when you're sitting at the piano Sitting up straight is an important way to sit. And it's not just pianos, other instruments too. So other methods will say that it's very important to have good posture. And so just think about that. You know, I I see on YouTube... I see on just videos, especially now online, that not everybody's sitting the way that the illustrations show you how to sit. Some books will have actual pictures of a student sitting at an instrument, and others will have an illustration. Somebody just decided to draw a picture. So if you're into the drawing thing or you're into photography, see us over at the C Major Radio Show because there we'd like to put a visual with everything that we talk about over here. Here is really just to to get you thinking, to get your wills turning in your mind, so to speak. So I think we would agree, though, that you need to sit up straight. You need to sit with a straight back. That is if you can. Okay, if you're not able to, that's a different issue altogether. And so we're not medical professionals here. We won't give you advice along those lines. But we're talking about the average piano student trying to sit up straight on a bench. And there's the other thing. Bench is very important. So what type of seat do you have when you're sitting facing the piano. Now, you'd be surprised about that. I've had students that will bring lawn chairs to the piano lesson. I kid you not. I really have to laugh about that one. (laughs) Because you do. You have to laugh to keep from crying. Because if you have students that think it's okay to bring lawn chairs to sit at their keyboard or to bring the type of chairs that you would sit, you know, on the sidelines, let's say if you're tailgating or something at a, at a sporting event, and you know those those chairs that you just unfold and then you just sit, and they almost look like a director's chair, but it's it's not proper. It's like your body kind of, kind of sinks into the fabric of the chair, and it doesn't really allow you to sit up straight. You know, some of those chairs lean back. So I've had situations where somebody will bring that out and say, okay, this is okay. Then I've had students who will bring a a chair from the kitchen table and say, is this okay uh, to sit in, for me to sit in? In some cases, I've even had to 
um, either go online and help my students shop for a proper bench or, you know, just help them somehow get something proper for themselves to use at the piano. So, you know, I won't go into those stories because I don't want anybody listening to the podcast to feel embarrassed that they didn't have the proper thing. But this is what we want you to do. We want you to sit up straight on the front part of a bench and be able to have a bench that you can sit on on the front part in the first place and then face the center of the piano. So then my students have a question about that. So, you know, sometimes, again, you know, the publishers, they do their best to really outfit every student. But I think as teachers, if you've been to the homes of students or in the case now, seeing online what students have in their homes, you know, it's a different issue. So we just have to be really sensitive, you know, meet the student where they are, you know, and try not to judge them, but also teach them at the same time what they should try to have you know, and then help them to get that. You know, that's what I was saying before. You know, you can you can go into a, a situation thinking, oh, it's going to be great. Let me just get a grant and get a whole bunch of money together and be able to work with, with students on their their music education. But then I think it's also important to be able to assess what the student has to work with when they're away from the class that you're giving to. So, facing the center of the piano is what we want. Having a proper bench, and if you don't know what that is, we can direct you towards something like that. Um, Where to sit on the bench? The center of the piano. So, if you have a piano, if you have an upright piano, Nine times out of ten, there would be a name on that piano. So usually the name is what the manufacturer gave the piano. And so if you have a keyboard, you may find yourself sitting a little bit either to the left or to the right to find the center of the keyboard because if you're trying to find middle C... Sometimes with keyboards, you can shift the sound so that you will have to move to to find the center of, of the piano. I think when they say the center of the piano, they really mean the physical center of the piano. But in the case of a keyboard, the center of the piano can also be where middle C is located. And sometimes that, get, that gets shifted. I just recall one time when I went to a gig and... I I had my keyboard set up, but someone else had been tampering with it, and then when I got ready to play, middle C wasn't where it was when I last rehearsed with that keyboard. So then I had to shift. <laughs> I had to change where I was sitting so that I would be able to reach the keys and the octave ranges that I needed for that particular performance. And then when I had a chance, I was able to shift the sound back mid-performance, mind you. But anyway, a piano be- a piano bench is one that we're really uh, looking to get you started on. Now, some professionals will have a type of piano seat that's built for them to sit in if they need back support. Okay, so you have those too. Sometimes you see professionals use an actual chair, but it's it's one that's custom made or especially built for performance and it does have a back to it but your typical piano student will have or need to have a bench that has no back and has no arms and you need to try to sit on the front part of the bench or or sometimes what's described as the first or the front half so that you can lean into the piano if you need to You probably won't be leaning back, but you may find yourself leaning to one side or the other. So I hope that's clear. If you need to, go ahead and and just research 
some of the piano benches that are online for you to purchase. And now that we are staying safe when it comes to shopping and perhaps just doing shopping online, I would say use this time to really connect with customer service and and let them know that you need something proper if you're calling a music retailer, for instance. In the case of Amazon, you may find some other choices, but I would say check with your music professional first before you actually pay the money. Now, that's the other question, too. How much money should you pay for a bench? So I have students that are willing and parents that are willing to spend as much as $100 for a bench, and then others not so willing. They may want to spend less than $10 for a bench, or in some cases they're hoping to get the bench for free, especially if they're making a purchase. But you have to weigh it for yourself. And so I've gone to piano lessons where the chairs and the benches weren't stable at all, and it felt very rickety, and like it could come crashing down to the floor at any moment. And that's the other thing. You also have to think about how much weight you will be putting on the bench. Will you be using a long bench where somebody can sit with you and play a duet? Or will you just be using a bench that's just wide enough just for you? You know, other things to think about. So sitting at the piano is not just this thing like, okay, it's quick and easy. I'll just get something to sit at the piano with. Now, you don't want to sit at the piano with a bar stool. I'm pausing there because I really want you to think about that. I do have students that will try to sit at their keyboards with something that's really high, that's almost like a high chair. Now, the only time I've seen students use a chair that's high in terms of height are the students that need them. The three-and-a-half-year-old to four-year-old students that may need to sit in a high chair in order to reach a keyboard, to sit at a kitchen table, to start until they can grow into something. I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about your typical student, beginning student, seven, eight, nine, and older. And so let's think along those lines. So now that you have thought about the proper bench that you should have, also continue now to think about your posture. So what do we mean when we say posture? Your posture has to do with whether or not you're sitting with a straight back or if you feel yourself sitting with a slump. Now I've had students that come to me with a natural slump because maybe they're into gaming Maybe they're into something else, like a sport that will allow them to slump or maybe have a posture with curved shoulders. Or in some cases, you know, maybe they just grew into that habit, you know, have students that are involved in all types of sports. And that doesn't mean that they will come to piano lessons with the posture that they need, and especially older students, by the time you're 12, 13, 14, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and and if you haven't practiced sitting up straight with a straight back, that may be something that you need to work on, but think about this. Are you able to breathe with ease while you're at the piano? Because you're supposed to be Relax. Playing the piano is very physical. It's something that you need to do in a relaxed manner. You shouldn't have any tension, you know. The more tension you have when you're playing the piano, the less easy it will be for you. So think about having a straight back. Think about being able to breathe. Thinking about relaxing when you're at the piano. Okay, but you're relaxing with the straight back, if that makes sense. Now, the other part we need to talk about is how are your feet going to be placed when you're sitting at the piano? 
Some method books will talk about this too. They will say, okay. If you are tall enough, then your feet should be flat on the floor. Are you sitting tall yet relaxed? Feet on the floor. If you're in a position where your feet are not quite reaching the floor, they're hanging, you do have a choice. You can use a footstool or you can use a stack of books to help you. So I've had students that will do that. They'll get their little footstools so they can keep their feet flat. You know, and I will say this too. I have students that just like to move around a lot. Like they don't even want to sit at all. They just want to stand the whole entire time. So the sitting part does take some work. And I imagine, for instance, if you're a percussionist, you would probably stand to play your instrument more than you would sit. But the piano is a percussion instrument. So if you're thinking, okay, every time I turn on a musical program on television, I see musicians standing at their keyboards. They're not sitting down. Well, that's a different issue because they're on the stage and they're performing with their keyboards. And so they're not studying at that time. I think the key word is performing. So when you're performing, that's a different matter or you have performers that will start sitting and then by the end of the performance they're standing and then of course you've seen performers that play on two different pianos at once so of course sitting at the piano is going to be a different challenge for them I'm not talking about that I'm talking about your every day sitting at the piano sit up straight face the front part of the piano the center if you can And it's important. It's also important to have a relaxed back while you're keeping your back straight. Relax shoulders and that your feet are flat on something. If it's not the floor, then you need to have it on a footstool or a stack of books. You know, you should be in the best possible position to play the piano. Okay, so... I know I spent a lot of time talking about that, but I really want to have you really start to think seriously about this. My students, you know who you are. (laughs) I love you all, but I really want you to start thinking more seriously about how you're sitting at the piano. It's going to make such a difference in your attitude when it comes to practicing. Okay? When I come back, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to get a sip of water. I'm going to breathe myself and relax, take a deep breath. And we're going to talk about the distance. Okay, I'm going to use some terms that you probably haven't heard of before. So get ready for that. I'll be back in a moment. You're listening to C Major Before the Show. on C Major Before the Show. I'm your host, C Major Porter. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, we're slowing things down a little bit. I felt in my heart I should do this podcast episode where we just slow things down a bit. You know, if you see the internet, everybody's kind of panicking and scurrying around and saying, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that, you know, to keep myself occupied during the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic that we're experiencing. So, 
Another thing that I keep hearing too is that some families are finding a way to slow things down. So I said, you know what, why don't we slow things down and just talk about the very basics today. So we're starting with sitting at the piano. And next we're going to talk about keeping your distance from the piano. So a lot of people don't realize this too. A lot of my students will sit too close. Sometimes it's because they can't see what they're doing. So if it's a visual issue, that's another matter altogether. But try to work with your teacher to get yourself positioned. So in some of the method books, they will show you, again, a picture of how far to sit from the piano. So if I say the word fall board, do you know what I mean? Okay, applaud if you know what fall board is. Okay, so maybe some of you know what fall board is, but some of you are going, oh boy, I don't know what fall board is. You can look at you can look it up. It's all one word, fall board, F-A-L-L-B-O-A-R-D. And here's the other thing that I find. If I have a student that has a keyboard, they may not really even have a fall board, but we have to still use that terminology to get them to um, to you know think about their distance now you can also measure the distance you can actually get out a measuring tape and see how far you are away from the piano so the distance between you and the piano the way you do it okay I want you to do this with me I want you to bring your arms up in the air okay now put them out straight right in front of you Now close your hands and make a fist. You can make a loose fist. It doesn't have to be a a tight fist. Okay, and then you want to reach forward. So do this in front of your piano. Again, you're sitting in, in front of your piano, hopefully with a bench, a proper bench. And don't make us feel, let you, you know, don't make us, don't let us make you feel bad. If you if you don't have a bench right now, use what you can, but just know you're aiming to get something that's proper. Okay, what you need to be able to do once you make the fist with your hands, reach forward and see if you can touch your knuckles on what we're calling the fall board. So if you don't know what that is, you know what? I'm going to look this up with you. We're going to find out what fall board is together. I know what I mean when I say fall board, but let's see what the internet says about fall board. So let's look that up together. Okay, so fall board fall board is all one word f-a-l-l-b-o-a-r-d and then the plural would be fall boards and it does refer to music so it um refers to really refers to the hinged cover which protects the keyboard of a piano when not in use okay but if you see this um illustration it's a little hard to tell if the cover is is closed or if the cover is up okay but you can get a sense of it if you just do a google search for yourself and look up fall board and then there's some other questions you know uh about how to uh find out more about fall board and some other questions that people ask when it comes to fallboard. But if I just look up the definition of fallboard, again, it really does talk about the cover of a piano keyboard. So it's really the back of the cover or the back of the black keys, if that makes sense. You know, um... And then you have, again, questions about whether or not you should keep the fall board open, should you keep it closed when it's not being played, and things like that. Okay, 
But now you should have a better sense of what we mean by fall board. You should be able to go to any piano teacher and they will tell you what what that means. And look on YouTube as well because they have some videos that will show you, you know, a little bit more about the fall board visual, the definition. Okay? All right, so hopefully that's clear. So if you have the correct distance from the piano, you should be able to put your arms straight out from your body and then your knuckles should just touch the fall board. And that's how you measure the distance between you and the piano. Now, not the front part of the fall board, the part that's actually covering like the front part of the keys, but the back part of the fall board. Okay? So if you have any questions, again, check with your music professional, check with your 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 music teacher and and to really be clear about this. Okay. Now, if you still have those loose fists, okay, now we're going to rest those on the keys just lightly. And you should see that your elbows are hanging loosely and then your back should be straight and then again just ask yourself are you sitting tall now you do have I'm not going to use this term here I'm just going to use part of the term here there's a certain pose that you can use to also measure um, your distance from the keyboard so anybody that does martial arts would probably be familiar with that term okay but we're not going to really use that term here and um, hopefully that's giving you a lot to think about, okay? So posture is very important when you're standing or sitting. In this case, we're sitting at the piano. And we want you to have a straight back. We want you to have your feet flat on the floor. And sometimes they will even talk about the width of your feet being apart. Well... We don't really talk about width that much with with piano. I mean, I see students that normally sit with their feet a little bit closer together than they are apart. So if you're playing a percussion instrument, like a snare drum or something like that, of course, you need to make sure you have some width between your feet so the instrument can rest between that space. But it's more important to have a straight back. It's more important to be able to breathe and to stay relaxed and um, to make sure your shoulders are relaxed and to also to feel very strong in terms of your balance, in terms of your gravity, feel in control of your body, not like you're going to fall over or anything like that. Okay, but I think you get the idea. So, when we talk about being relaxed, that's another matter. Okay, It may be hard for you to feel relaxed, let's say, if you have to put something underneath your feet. Okay, Maybe it brings your legs up a little too high. Then you have to make sure that you have the right adjustment there, too. Okay, A lot of times my students will want to start off with tampering with the pedals. That's not really the first thing you will do in your first lesson. You may just talk about them, but you nine times out of ten, you won't necessarily put them in use. If anything, you may just put sustain pedal to use just to hear some of the sounds resonate. But any piano teacher should be able to tell you what all three of those pedals will do if you happen to have a piano that has three. Some pianos only have two, and then in the case of a keyboard, you would just have just a sustain pedal unless you have a three pedal attachment. So in that case, you have what they call extensions that you can purchase to go with your keyboard, okay? So far we've covered sitting on a bench, how to sit tall with your back straight, how to measure your distance from the fall board. It's really, really important to have correct posture. It's really important to have the right distance at the piano, to have your arms level with the keyboard. You know, I I remember, I recall a, a, a situation where I went to a piano lesson and 
the student was sitting super high on her seat. So her hands were reaching down into the keyboard, you know, and I just thought, you know, she must really be uncomfortable. And it turns out that she was, and we were able to make the adjustment. But again, it's not the same thing where you see a professional on stage. You know, you even see performers that have their keyboard on a strap around their shoulders (laughs) playing the keyboard, and so they're reaching down to play the keys because it looks cool to do that. We're not talking about that. That's in a performance. But when you're in a performance, but when you're learning to play the piano, you do want to think about your your posture and how you're sitting and, and to get the most out of your your lesson and your practice and to feel comfortable, to feel relaxed, and to really think about those things. Now, when we say relaxed, let's get to that. We want you to be able to breathe and be comfortable. And some method books will even go through a procedure for that, you know, the breathing. You know, how can you breathe through something? It could be something that is cylindrical, like a uh, paper towel holder something you that you can also look through and you know as you're sitting tall you just want to be able to let that air flow through that so in some of the teacher training that I've done we talked about this if you let your body slump then the air can't pass easily through your body and you're going to be able to feel that so they even suggest you know a paper towel holder is the right thing because you can bend it you can make it round if you bend it and you try to look through it again then it's like a representation of what your body is doing if your body is bent now I like this because it's one of the few methods that will talk about this so the teacher training for this is really really good because it does say okay You know, if you don't believe what I'm saying to you, let's just use this as an example. This gives you a visual. Okay, so keep that visual. Take that with you over to the C Major Radio Show because we're going to be doing some drawing. We're going to use some artistry over there today to get you to really think about your sitting, your posture, your breathing, all of that. And so getting back to this idea of the bench again, I I like to do this with my students because as much as it may sound like a teacher wagging her finger saying, you must, you must, you must, it's also important to do something the wrong way so that you can really get a sense of, okay, this is why I need to do it this way. Okay? So in the case of the bench, and I've had students to do this too. They would just come and come to the piano lesson not thinking about anything, rushing in, maybe they're late, they were in traffic, you know, students in the Northeast and the New York City area tend to be hyper scheduled. So they may be running from one thing to another or, you know, 10 minutes late and they only have 20 minutes left in their lesson if they're doing a 30 minute lesson and then not even pay attention to how they're coming into the lesson all, all rushed. Their bench may be crooked and you have to, to help them rearrange the bench. They may be too far. They may be too close. You know, things like that. So I find myself adjusting my my students from time to time and really helping them to be relaxed. So they may just be nervous, you know, about the lesson. So I try to use my teacher training, becoming a better music teacher, becoming a better teaching artist, to empower the students so they feel autonomous, so they feel in charge of their lessons, their studio, what they're bringing to the lessons. And then just really get you to think about, you know, how you're going to do all of these things as you prepare to play the piano well. I think it really is about attitude. You know, what's your attitude coming to the piano? Now, 
We spent a good amount of time talking about this. Spent about 40 minutes, going on 40 minutes, into the podcast. And you're probably thinking, wow, C major is really talking intently about this today. Yes, because it's important. But if you say, okay, you know what, C major, I don't care. I just really want to play. I just really want to play. Okay, there are places out there that will allow you to do that. You can just jump right now on the internet and just start playing. Fast, fast, fast. Go, go, go. Not even think about all these important things. You can jump ahead of the curve. It's, oh, later for all that. Okay, but I would just caution you. Really think about what you're doing. Okay? A lot of playing the piano well has to do less with making sure all the notes are there and also making sure that you're there, like 100%, really engaged, really relaxed, really in charge of your sound, really in charge of how you're showing up physically to the instrument. So the point is this, okay? And then we're going to stop, and then we're going to talk about some shout-outs that I have, and I'm going to share with you some things that I, some really cool things that I got to do this week. I'm really excited about. But I told you what I was going to talk about. I told you. And now I'm going to tell you what we just talked about. To get you to think further. When you sit at the piano, it's not just like sitting in your rocking chair. It's not just like sitting in your easy chair. It's not just like sitting at a table, a kitchen table, or sitting on a bar stool, or anything like that. Okay? And you should really make it a point to sit tall to sit straight don't slouch like Oscar the Grouch I like Oscar the Grouch but don't slouch like him don't scrunch because you know a lot of the furniture that you use at home is not the right furniture for you according to your size so it doesn't matter what age you are you could be a child you could be an adult you still need to sit with something that's proper. It's important. So I have students that will make a face if I ask them, oh, straighten up your posture. And so it's also important to demonstrate that and then if you're a teacher and you're involved in teacher training and you say, okay, I'm going to get into piano lessons, everybody's doing it, I would just encourage you to really think about how you're going to instruct your students to sit. And everything's on video now. Everybody's watching. So you want to make sure that um, you use that to your advantage to really instruct in a way that's going to help somebody and to make them comfortable. So there are some easy ways to measure your distance. And then as you're developing, if you're a young person and you're growing, of course you're going to grow so that you may not need to sit as close as you may sit when you're younger. Things like that. But you don't want to sit too far away from the piano. okay? But I'm going to make this a fun music exercise too. So when you go over to C Major's classroom... Just know we're going to mention some things that will also get you to further think and discuss what you've seen, maybe on video about someone else and what they're doing, the professionals. But here's the thing. Once you know what the rules are, then when you get to that level of professionalism, you can change some of the rules. That's the way I think about that. But as you are learning and developing, you want to know the right way. Okay? So it really is best to try your best to learn all of these things at the beginning. Really do yourself a favor this week. Think about your seat. Think about your posture at the piano. We're here for you if you have any questions about that. If you want to do some research yourself, you know, feel free. Just look it up. Do a Google search. Sitting properly at the keyboard because it's going to affect so much. Are you able to breathe when you're playing? Are you able to breathe easier? Are you relaxed? Um, Where are your feet? Do you have the right support? Are you centered? 
You know, if you need to, seek a medical professional to even talk with you about the correct posture. They can talk to you about your the alignment that's going on and things like that, okay? And we will say this, and I think we all agree, that if you are not seated properly, if you are using what we call poor sitting and poor posture, that you're going to have a lot of technical issues as you go along, okay? So some of you may not agree with that. I have students right today who say, oh, I don't care about technique and artistry. Well, you should. It's one of the things that we introduce so that you have a well-rounded education in piano. And so there's nothing wrong with trying to get into some really, really good habits, okay? And if you need some video examples, there will be some online. You can find those, I'm pretty sure, across the board with teacher training videos that are out there, YouTube videos. If you're a young person, make sure you get permission from your parents first before you try to view something like that. And then if you're an adult, I would say, just really think about it. Think about your posture. Think how you can improve um, how you've been sitting all these years if, if you've never done it before, okay? Think about if you're too far away. Think about if you hold your arms straight out and make a, a fist, a loose fist, Will you be reaching the fall board? Think about if you need to move your bench, you know, before you sit down to practice. Think about where your hands are when you get ready to play the keys. Are they level? Are they reaching down? Are they reaching up? You know, I'm thinking about professional pianists that that do play the piano sitting with a different posture and and sitting at the piano in ways that beginning students will not be sitting. We'll say it like that. But finding the right distance, finding the right height, getting ready to play, getting ready to practice is so important. And you should really think about asking yourself, why is this important? You know, it's no different than when you get ready to prepare for something else. You know, I talk a lot about coffee culture on this podcast and so there's a proper way to do everything you know and in coffee culture you have to make sure you have the right proportion of water to the right proportion of grinds you know otherwise your coffee is not going to taste right and it's not going to come out the way that you hoped it would come out well think of it like that you're making the adjustments that will create the best experience for yourself so thinking about how your feet are placed thinking about if you're planted firmly on the center of a bench. And a bench is just one of those things that you will have in terms of your studio equipment. Thank you so much for being with us here today. We're going to get some shout-outs next. And in our next class, just to give you a heads up, we're going to talk a lot about hand positioning. Now, that's my favorite topic right there because I have a lot to say about that. Okay, let me get my other notes together. And when we come back, shout outs here. You're listening to C Major before the show. being with us here on C Major before the show. I'm your host, C Major Porter, and we just spent a good amount of time talking with you about sitting at piano and, and posture, and I'm just thinking about those stories about my students that weren't sitting properly when they needed to be, and, and they had to learn a hard lesson. I'm not going to spoil their confidentiality and, and tell you embarrassing stories or stories that would be embarrassing to them, but you know, they've had to learn the hard way. I've had some students that had to learn the hard way about sitting at the piano properly. Um, And if something went wrong, it did happen in front of their parents. They were right there (laughs) 
to uh, also reinforce the idea of sitting properly so that you will not lose your footing or lose your seat. And so sitting in a way that provides a strong center of gravity is so important. You always want to feel in control of your body. That's what we're saying today. Shout outs. I do have some shout outs to give to my students that are busy practicing throughout the coronavirus, throughout COVID-19. They are really into their music making. And then I have some students who have hit a wall in terms of their music making. So shout out to you too, because I know that you would really enjoy continuing to work on stuff that you enjoy playing. And so as we continue to social distance, we're going to work on that together. So I'm very happy that you're continuing your journey in music making and that we're, we are able to be a part of that. I have some other non-student shout outs to give too, because how am I getting through all of this is that I'm making as many music connections online that I could possibly make and reconnecting with old musician friends and things like that. I think I mentioned either on the last podcast or before that I've been really tapping into a lot of house music. You guys have heard me mention this before on the podcast that I really love house music. It's just something about it. It really reminds me of the music that I grew up listening to and it was so upbeat and so fun to hear. And that's how I became inspired to learn more about what DJs do. So if you are into house music and you're not um, a person that does not enjoy house music and, and you would enjoy hearing a good set of, of tunes from the 70s, 80s, and even the 90s, and then you have, here in the 21st century, you have groups that are even making retro music or DJs that are devoted to that. Then I would say, listen to Glitterbox. I recommend Glitterbox. And I find it very fun. They have an array of, of DJs that are able to put together really inspiring sets. And it's been keeping me really sane, I would have to say, and upbeat. So shout out to them. And it's always so fun to connect with my friends that are into house music. So you know who you are if you happen to be listening to the podcast. And I want to say, too, that I'm very excited. I was able to attend this webinar where they were talking about the making of pianos. And so, as you know, one of the premier makers of pianos of our time is Steinway. So I was able to ask a couple of questions in the webinar, and it was just so fascinating. You know, I also did this series called Music for Elephants, and I know you're still learning about that series, but shout out to Stage It, you know, for allowing us to be able to do live streaming sets and really do what we do online. That was really a great experience for me. And so I'm concerned about elephants because I feel like, you know, you come full circle when you think about elephants were the one that provided ivory for us to use on pianos in the first place when they were first being manufactured. And so my heart goes out to any elephants that are still being mistreated today. We have to protect them because of them, pianos were made available for us to play on prior to the 1950s. And then, of course, you had those pianos that were still around that had those ivory keys. And then I found out through this webinar that starting around the mid-50s, that piano manufacturers, especially in the New York City area, decided to discontinue the use of ivory for keys. Now, I did not know that. 
I didn't know if that had happened later or around that time, but I found out it was mid 20th century that you had that type of movement where manufacturers moved away from importing keys. And so they started importing the type of keys which we now use that are made from plastic. And so that was good to know that maybe because of what was going on with elephants that manufacturers decided to change how they were using ivory for the making of of pianos and manufacturing those pianos. So that was really interesting. And then I was able to ask that question that I've also spoken about on the podcast. Is it best to use technology when you're into professional recording? Or is it best to use the real deal? So there's that question, you know, that some people think is an issue of integrity. Some people think it's an issue of saving money. And I love this question that I asked. And I love the answer that came back. But I was able to ask it. I said, if you can, could you please speak about the signature sound of some modern Steinway pianos used in technology for professional sound recording? And speak to the viability or the value of capturing authentic proprietary sound versus investing in the instrument itself. So since I worked in professional audio, that question was always coming up. And I had I had a chance to see a video this week where a DJ was talking about, a very famous DJ was talking about how he wished he could play instruments and not use technology. And so that's when you realize, okay, it really isn't a choice for him. And the way he described it, he described making music for him was like coloring. He has to color the sound that he wants using technology. And I thought that was so interesting. So in other cases, you have a musician or someone of a really high caliber that says, man, once technology came along, I have all the instruments at my fingertips on my computer. Why should I play a real instrument when I can make music using technology, using a software program? So anyway, the answer that came back was, and it was a great answer, every Steinway piano is unique. And so the pianos that are used to record are just well-prepared grands that someone selected nothing in caps nothing compares to playing on a Steinway itself while you might be able to create a Steinway-esque sound digitally an acoustic piano is always always in caps worth the investment and then smiley face so he gave me an emoji which was funny so Applause to Steinway. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the webinar. And shout out to Steinway. So, I think that brings our episode to a close today thank you so much for being here next week we're going to be talking about the basic topic of hand positioning you don't want to miss that because we've been talking about whether or not you should be playing with fingernails nail tips and all of that and uh, some of our recent podcasts and this will have to do with that how can you have proper hand positioning on the piano so join us next week right here on c major before the show And then, of course, we will have a lot to say about that. And then we will see you next week right here on the podcast. If you are able to join us this evening, we're going next over to the C Major Radio Show where we write things down. So get out your pencils, get ready to draw, and we'll see you over there. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Take care.